Let's take a look at the different stitch types that are available in Design Shop. I have open OneDay.OFM that's located in the Designs folder uh, that's loaded with your software. I'm not going to be able to see the different stitch types until I go into 3D mode. And now I'll be able to tell a little bit of the difference. So this gives you kind of a visual preview of what is a satin stitch, what is a fill. But how to change that is in Object Properties. On another page, I have just some lettering up. I have it in 3D mode. If I select that lettering, I can see my stitch type on the object property bar. I could also right click on it and go to properties. If I have lettering open, I'll have all of my lettering information first and then I'll have top stitching. If I go to top stitching, that's where my stitch type will be. I'm going to be changing it on the object property bar just so it gives us a little bit more room to see. The first stitch type that we should probably look at is the satin stitch and that's what I have set this lettering to and that's what lettering is usually set to for default. Um, satin stitches tend to be more rounded, more, more sculptural, they stay up out of the fabric a little bit more. They do have a limited size range in that if it is too small it will be smaller than the diameter of the needle and that can cause you some thread breaks. If they are too long they can snag and pull out in which case we probably want to choose a different stitch type, something like a fill. So this is set to a satin stitch. If I take it out of 3D, you can see that the stitches go across the form. Let me zoom in so we can see that they're going across the form, which is nice. One other really nice thing about satin stitches is that they save on stitch count. Because they are only sinking needle penetrations on either side of the form and they're not sinking within the form, I'm saving stitches, I can do it faster. Um, and the other nice thing is that they will change stitch direction throughout the form. So as I go through a curved letter like an S or a C or an O, I'm changing stitch directions as I move throughout that form. The next stitch type that we should look at is the fill stitch type. So right now this is set to satin. Take a look at the stitch count. It is 1,000, sorry about that, 1,746. If I change this to a fill, my stitch count has jumped to 2,796. So I've increased my stitch count. You'll also notice that my stitching has taken on a much flatter look. Fills are usually used for larger areas. They sink stitches within the form so they are tighter, stay closer to the, the surface of the fabric. They are less likely to snag and pull out. So again, they're used for those larger areas so that you, you can't, um, <laughs> can't ruin your garment that way. It does raise the stitch count, so do be aware of that. And um, let's take a look at another use of that. So let me go back to one, sorry, let me go back to one day. And you'll notice in one day, the leaves are all satin stitches. They tend to be very rounded, very sculptural. The pears and the bird are very, very flat. And those are used with fills because they're larger. And we want to be able to fill that in without those stitches snagging. Let's go back to the original. Another stitch type that I might look at is a zigzag stitch. Now this, probably not meant for lettering. This is more of a tack down type of stitch for maybe an applique or something like that. Along those same lines, we would have an E-stitch, which again, not really meant for lettering, but it does go around the form and then jump in to tack it down. Again, tack down for applique is what this is typically used for. A level dependent stitch type that we have is an edge fill. Now this can look kind of cool for lettering in that it can look kind of like wood grain. If I take it out of 3D, you'll notice, this, notice that the stitches run parallel to the edge. So they run kind of with the form instead of across it. It looks a little bit weird for some lettering, but it can be used to great effect um, for more organic shapes and more special effects types of embroidery. So if I have a shape like this that has a lot of thick and thin, and I just digitize that using a column two, if I change this to an edge fill, you can see that those stitches run with the form. And where it gets narrower, the stitches get closer together. Where it gets wider, they get farther apart. So it definitely can add a sense of three-dimensionality to it. If I loosen 
up my density so my stitches are farther apart, you can see even more just how that effect can play out. So this could be something that's really great for maybe the, the mane of a lion or the tail of a horse where you want those stitches to follow along that path and this can definitely lend itself towards that or maybe something a little bit more botanical. All right, let's zoom out. Let's go ahead and delete that because that's just going to confuse us a little bit later on. Let's go back into 3D and let's look at a tackle stitch. This too is a level dependent stitch type. It is basically a zigzag with the, the default density set to 17. It is also used as a tack down for applique and occasionally it might be used for something like an underlay that you were digitizing manually, but for the most part, tack down for an applique or a tackle twill style of applique, which is where those edges are slightly exposed. Other stitch types you will see are decorative and sequin. Those are meant more for larger areas or linear elements, and they just allow a pattern to fill that area or follow along that path. So those are your major stitch types. For the majority of what you're working on, you're going to be either be using a satin stitch or a fill. There is a tool in there that is auto stitch type, and that bases the stitch type on how large the element is. For smaller elements, anything between like a 10 to 60 point range, you would be using a satin stitch, and auto stitch type would automatically make that a satin. Anything larger than that or averaging larger than that would be a fill. If I had a shape, so let's digitize a shape real quick. I'm just going to, I'll do it with a column two. If I do something that has a thick and a thin, so it changes the average stitch line length. So a stitch line is just kind of what it sounds like, the line that the, the stitching takes. Let me zoom in here so we can take a better look at this. So it would be across the form, basically. If I look at this in properties, right now I'm the one choosing for it to be a satin stitch, but if I turn on auto, it will automatically apply a stitch type to it. If you want to understand what auto is doing, you can click on this little box that appears with this ellipsis in it. And when I click on that box, it will give me the information that it is using and this is kind of a lot of information to kind of digest at the moment but the range of the small object which is what it's choosing to have be a satin stitch is 0 to 60 points it's being a satin stitch with auto density so it will change the density for the narrow objects it will be lighter for the the wider objects it'll be a little bit more dense as it gets much larger and the stitches average longer than, or the stitch lines average longer than 60 points, it will become a fill. It'll be a standard step fill with four partitions and all of this crazy fill information that we don't really deal with on, on a daily basis, but it is there if you need to, to adjust it. Just for the most part know that smaller objects are going to be satin stitches, larger objects are going to be fills, which makes sense. Smaller objects aren't going to snag and pull out, larger ones might, so we make them a fill. This is a great tool to use if you know you're going to be scaling an object frequently. So here we have an object, it's averaging larger than 60 points going across the form and you can measure this if you wanted to. Grab my ruler and measure and this is 68 points and here is 55 points. So as it goes through it averages all of that out. If it's larger than 60 points it'll be a fill. If I shrink this down it just changed my stitch type to satin, so it is automatically changing based on the size or the average stitch line length. And that's auto stitch type. There's another tool in here using a satin stitch. So we know for the majority of what we want to use for, let's say, lettering or medium size elements, we're probably going to be using satin stitches because it'll save the stitch counts and it'll look very sculptural and very much like people think of embroidery looking. If I use lettering, Let's go back to our Melco here and let's go ahead and change this to Diane script. Diane script is a lovely script. It has a nice thin and thick change throughout the form. If I make this bigger, something to maybe 2.5 inches tall, we have for the majority you see this lovely shiny sculptural satin stitches, but right in here it is beginning to change. 
when I go to the properties of satin stitches, you'll see a line in here that says use fill for stitch lines greater than 60 points. What that means is if I am using a satin stitch for the majority of what I'm doing, if that element exceeds 60 points every once in a while, go ahead and switch that over to be a fill. And what it'll use is a random patternless fill. That'll show up far more on screen than in the sew out, but it'll kind of sink needle penetrations within the form so that's less likely to snag and pull out, but it'll randomize where those penetrations are and make it harder to tell the difference between the satin stitches in the shape and the fill within the shape. So if you look at this M, you can see that where it's exceeding 60 points, it is becoming a random patternless fill to make sure that it is not snagging and pulling out. But overall, it is still using that satin stitch that I asked it to. So it will change where just that area is larger as opposed to auto stitch type, which would average everything and change the whole stitch type of the whole element. This little line in there, use spills for stitch lines greater than, will change it only where that exceeds, exceeds that 60 points. So this is a great tool for if I'm using a monogram that's a little bit larger than it normally would be, or lettering that's going to be a little bit bigger than it normally would be, it'll go ahead and sync that in and just save you, sell, save you from having stitches snag and pull out where they're wider. So those are all of your stitch types that you're going to be dealing with and a couple of the little quirks that happen in the properties of some of those stitch types.